Welcome to my classroom. I am Nestle. In this video, I will try to explain the local potentials, how they are formed by the movement of different ions, and what is their difference from an action potential. We know that all cells in our body have an electrical potential difference between the two sides of the membrane, and this is called a resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential in most of the cells is between minus 60 to minus 90 millivolts. Remember that when we are talking about a membrane potential, we always refer to the inside of the cell membrane. So when I say a cell has a membrane potential of minus 90, I mean that inside of the cell is 90 millivolts more negative compared to the outside of the cell. So the resting membrane potential is present in all of the cells, but only some cells in the body are able to change their resting membrane potential to produce new membrane potentials. These cells are nerve cells, muscle cells, and some endocrine cells like the cells of the pancreas. The cells that are able to change their resting membrane potential are called excitable cells. So the excitable cells are able to produce two new, two different types of these potentials. What are they? These are local potentials and action potentials. Let us try to understand the local potentials by giving examples from a cell by numbers and by special ions. Let's imagine that we have a cell with a resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Here is our cell. And let's also put here the Nernst potential of the ions that we are going to talk about. The Nernst potential for potassium in this imaginary cell is minus 85 millivolts, and the nearest potential of sodium in the same cell is plus 61 millivolts. We know from our video about the resting membrane potential that a cell with minus 70 millivolt resting membrane potential and these nearest potentials that are written on the board has many leak channels for potassium, and a few leak channels for sodium when the cell is at rest. We know that leak channels are not the only types of channels that are present on the membrane of the cells. We also have the channel group which are called the gated channels. And we know that there are three types of gated channels. One is the chemical or ligand gated channels. Two is the mechanically gated channels, and three is the voltage gated channels. So if these channels, oh, so if we have a look at the channels all together, leak channels are basically responsible for the formation and maintenance of the resting membrane potential. On the other hand, we are going to use the ligand gated or mechanically gated channels for the production of the local potentials. Now let us try to give examples about this. What is going to happen if some ligand-gated potassium channels open in our cells in this example? We know that now we are going to have many leak channels plus ligand-gated potassium channels in addition to them. 
and the number, if you follow it, the number of the potassium channels are going to be very high in this cell. Let's have a look at the electrical and the chemical forces. Minus 70 millivolt is our electrical force here because the minus potential is going to pull potassium into the cell. This is going to create an inward force with 70 magnitude. What about the chemical force here? The chemical force is the force created by the concentration difference of potassium and it is equal to the amplitude of the Nernst potential. So the concentration gradient of potassium will be pushing potassium by a force of 85 out of the cell. If you have a look at the net force, the net force is going to be 15 and it will be pushing potassium out of the cell through the many leak channels and extra ligand gated potassium channels that are present now on the membrane. The, what is the result of this? The result of it is that put more potassium will be moving out of the cell and this is going to cause an increase in the inner negativity or we can say it is going to make the membrane potential more negative. If you uh, follow me, you are going to see that I'm no longer calling it a resting membrane potential. Now it is basically a local potential and it's a membrane potential. With the movement of potassium outward, the membrane potential will become more negative and it will move towards the nearest potential of potassium, which is 85, minus 85 millivolts. We can give another example for the sodium. If some, for the uh, sodium ion, if some new ligand gated channels open this time for sodium in the same cell, what is going to happen? To understand what will happen, we need to look at the electrical and chemical forces for sodium as well. The minus 70 millivolt of resting membrane potential will be pulling positively signed sodium with a power of 70 into the cell. The concentration gradient of sodium is also into the cell and then it will be, it will be pushing sodium into the cell with a force of 61 millivolts that's equal to the Nernst potential, 61. So a total of force in this example, the driving force, a total of 131 millivolts will be pushing the sodium ion into the cell. When sodium ion goes into the cell, we know that it is going to bring in positivity into the cell and the membrane potential of the cell will become less negative and it will move towards the membrane potential of uh, sodium. In this example now we have many leak potassium channels, very few leak sodium channels plus now a lot of ligand gated sodium channels together with it. So the amount of sodium that goes in through these channels is going to be very big. Here uh, we may ask the question, um, who is going to win, potassium or sodium? Through the many leak channels for potassium, a, a force of 15 millivolts is pushing potassium outward, so trying to make the membrane potential more negative, but from few leak channels plus lots and lots of ligand gated sodium channels, sodium is coming into the cell to make, to move it, trying to move it towards the nice potential of sodium, which is plus 61 millivolt. Who is going to win depends on the total number of channels that are present and their 
permeability to these ions. When extra ligand gated potassium channels open, it is easier to understand that potassium is going to move out. But what is going to happen when extra ligand gated sodium channels open? This time, the total number of sodium channels will be greater than the total number of potassium channels. And the effect of sodium is going to be more obvious. Therefore, opening of ligand gated sodium channels will produce will produce a less negative membrane potential. Now let us try to examine these electrical potential changes on a graphic. Here is our graphic. The x-axis is time and y-axis is giving us the level of membrane potential in millivolts. This is the zero millivolt level. In our cell, in the example, the resting membrane potential was minus 70 millivolts. If nothing happens in the cell, uh, simply by the presence of the leak, sodium and potassium channels in the cell, the membrane potential will stay constant at 70 millivolts. If some ligand gated sodium channels are opening and the number of open sodium channels increases. This number is equal to the ligand gated plus the leak sodium channels. What is going to happen? Sodium is going to move into the cell and the membrane potential is going to become less negative. What sodium is trying to do here is to, it is that it is trying to bring the membrane potential towards its nearest potential, which is plus 61. This type of potential change in a cell has a special name, and this is called a depolarization. Uh, this is by opening of sodium ligand gated or mechanically gated sodium channels. If ligand gated uh, potassium channels open, what is going to happen? In this case, potassium is going to move out of the cell, which is going to make the membrane potential more negative. And this type of change in the membrane potential has a special name. It is called hyperpolarization. So this way we have seen that there are two types of local potentials that can form. The local potentials can make the membrane pot go depolarizing or they can make the membrane membrane go hyperpolarizing. Uh, potassium is moving out and this way it is trying to bring the membrane potential towards its nearest potential. Sodium is moving into the cell and this way it is trying to bring so the membrane potential towards the nearest potential of itself. What about chloride? Chloride is a little bit uh, different and uh, in different cells. So uh, let's examine it in a separate way. Uh, 